Okay, let's go through the Vampire the Masquerade character sheet point by point. Of course, first you have the name of the character, the player's name, the chronicle's name. And you know, I don't really like to name the chronicle uh, except after the cr chronicle has already ended. If the character is put into a file and you kind of dust it off and find it one day again, you can remember, oh, it was that chronicle where I used the character. But, you know, there's no need really to uh, name the chronicle during the game. Uh, and of course, character name, you know, it's obvious, and your name is also obvious. Nature, demeanor, and concept. Now, those are the beginning steps of uh, creating your character's personality, and that's where you should start. Before going into any statistics, you should know kind of what the character is about as a person. The concept being basically uh, who your character is in the society. What's his role? What's he all about? That sort of thing. Is he a vagabond? Is he, a, is he a computer engineer? Is he, a, is he a taxi driver? It doesn't always have to be like his job. It can be like a, a struggling single mother or something like that. Whatever you want to uh, uh, put there, but it's a good thing uh, to start from. And then nature and demeanor are something that uh, White Wolf uh, has uh, put on basically all of their... Uh, uh, games and uh, nature and demeanor are interesting. They are basically who you are inside yourself, really in your inner self, uh, being the nature and demeanor, how you present yourself to everybody. Because the way you present yourself to everybody is not always and often is not the thing you would be uh, inside yourself. The uh, the thing that you kind of bring out only to those who. Um, when you're not trying to bring out any effect in people, that sort of thing. Like somebody who could be like a really like full of themselves as their demeanor, their demeanor being that they're very self-confident all around like a, they know what they're doing all the time and they're, they're the captain of the ship, but their nature is somebody they really like have some insecurities with themselves or something like that. You, you know, there's a, there's a list of natures and demeanors in the uh, rule books, but you you're absolutely free to come up with uh, uh, nature and demeanor yourself. It's not really that important in terms of mechanics because the only mechanical inclination is that you are to play uh, role play your character uh, according to your demeanor most of the time and your nature is basically when you act according to your uh, nature you regain some willpower points uh, which is a good way of uh, rewarding the player for a good role playing uh, you don't need to uh, always reward them with experience points willpower points are very useful in the game so role playing according to your character is a good source to uh, uh, get some uh, willpower points then there is clan, generation, and sire. And uh, <clears throat> of course, in Vampire, you have multiple clans from which to choose from. And uh, these are not exactly like, say, classes in uh, fantasy role playing games or so stuff like that. But these are uh, intricate points. Um, in character creation, and it's not only about you know what sort of uh, uh, what sort of character did you w would you like to do in terms of uh, what you want to specialize in in terms of your abilities and such. It's it's much more of uh, going into the fabric of the vampire society. Each clan is like a sect. It's like a, a social group. It's like a, a, a little family type of thing, and it's not really all that much about the disadvantage advantages and advantages of being in a, a specific clan, it's more about the social aspect of it. What does it mean uh, to have uh, to be of a certain clan when the uh, uh, most powerful people in your city are of another specific clan that maybe they have some history uh, that's uh, that they maybe they have some gripe uh, or something like that. It, it could easily be that um, that your uh, clan is uh, chosen, and it, uh, uh, and it ought to be chosen, uh, if you ask me, on the basis of wh what you want uh, for your character in the context of the world, not so much uh, what you want the character to uh, be able to do in terms of their abilities and such. Uh, and uh, there's a lot to choose from. And uh, like I mentioned, all of the clans have their own uh, supernatural little weakness that they have. And uh, there's also a 
lot of personality um, features and not not so much uh, like uh, they are all only stereotypes they are what uh, how others uh, perceive the, that clan they are not uh, they are not bonds for a player that you must play this clan this way it's more of a uh, that's the outlook of the clan uh, in the eyes of other clans and also the clans often uh, not always but often uh, pick their um, recruits and people they turn into vampires based on uh, criteria but no, not everybody follows those criteria and it's uh, it's more of a stereotype and an and a overarching look on how other clans see them and then we go into the generation and the generation is uh, something that gets abused a lot of times because it's e an easy way to be a power gamer uh, all the all the kind of uh, default uh, for vampires is that they are of the uh, same specific uh, generation. Generations being basically that how many generations of vampires have been there uh, before you were created. Uh, was was the vampire who was who created you created by someone who was created by someone and blah 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 that's uh, and so forth. Or were you like uh, the uh, sixth? Uh, vampire to be created in that bloodline of uh, vampires being uh, vampires creating other vampires and uh, the shorter the generation is the more powerful you are uh, basically meaning the less um, uh, the more uh, potent the blood is when it's when it hasn't gone through generations and generations and uh, you can easily buy your character very cheaply you can buy your character to be of a um, of a, uh, a smaller generation, but then again, it's it's it should be more because it is so cheap to be uh, uh, to be able to be of a, a smaller generation. It's uh, it's something that should be uh, more about the character that it's. Uh, that it's a distinctive feature on the character to be of that generation and not that it's uh, a, just an easy, cheap way to be more powerful. And uh, then there's the sire and that is basically just naming whoever made you into a vampire and that is sim simply just a note. Uh, that's not um, that's not that important uh, in game terms. Uh, you know, you can just, you know, just as easily you can write it down at the back of the character sheet or something. Basically, you can just write uh, Joe Blow there if that's the sire's name or something. Next, it's the attributes, and these are uh, uh, put into three different categories, and those are the physical, social, and mental attributes. And attributes are all from one to five, and I think that is a very simple way of putting it. That basically means that that is the uh, uh, rate on which, where a human can be. If your, uh, let's say, your strength is one, that is the minimal a human strength can be without uh, being unable to basically lift your own body up and that is why all of these attributes are uh, already in the character creation process at one they can't be less than one because like if strength would be less uh, less than one you wouldn't be able to uh, hold your own body up you would be basically I guess wheelchair bound and of course that could be implemented in role-playing uh, uh, somewhere in there but you know <laughs> that's that's that would be uh, differing from the norm very much and of course, five being the absolute maximum that a human can be. You know, uh, at, at, of course, uh, the uh, something like uh, strength, uh, physical, um, uh, physical records of uh, of people beating the top record of lifting a specific weight or something. Of course, keep getting higher and higher as the as time goes on. But still, the strength is about how much you can lift and carry. You know, if you can just uh, you know deadlift. Uh, a certain amount, it's not the same as being able to hoist that amount on your shoulder and uh, and uh, carry it to uh, to somewhere or something like that. So that is easily, that is very easy uh, in terms of all the physical attributes and social attributes and mental attributes to know that uh, five is basically, you can imagine uh, a, an example of uh, basically the peak of human ability in that attribute and one being the uh, a smallest uh, that a human can be, whether it's uh, strength, dexterity, or stamina, whether it's charisma, manipulation, appearance, 
or whether it's uh, perception, intelligence, or wits. And uh, after that, uh, oh, oh, I want to men mention that, of course, there is one attribute that can be in zero, and that is appearance, but that is a supernatural feature. Only the clan Nosferatu can have their appearance at uh, zero, or uh, any character who has this supernatural flaw of being monsterious. Then your appearance is not just that you're ugly, it's that you are terrifyingly ugly, you are supernaturally ugly. No human can be at appearance zero, only supernatural beings are able to be that. So remember that when you make a Nosferatu character, they are supernaturally hideous a more hideous than any human ever could be. And um, yes, let's go to abilities next. And they are also branched into three categories and they are also from one to five. Now abilities are not uh, at one in, at the beginning because of course you can easily have like you've never uh, driven a car so of course driving is uh, uh, at zero for you. And these are not uh, put into categories of physical, social or mental and they are not like that That clear cut uh, lined up with the attributes. These are in the categories of talents, skills and knowledges. Talents being your natural uh, innate abilities that you can, uh, uh, that you can uh, train to be better at. Skills are learned abilities such as driving a car or, or, uh, or uh, uh, performing uh, on the stage or, or, uh, or handling animals or something like that. And knowledges are just that, they are uh, usually book learned um, abilities. And of course with these the, uh, uh, the, the uh, mechanic basically is that you always roll the amount of dice that you have dots in something and you always take one attribute and an ability for something that you roll. Let's say you roll for uh, driving. If you're trying to uh, cut through uh, corners and lose somebody who's tailing you on the on the road, perhaps you would take a uh, uh, the skill ability of drive. Of course, you're using a car. You need to be able to be a good driver and that with that uh, I would say you would take from the mental, you would take wits. Uh, you need to be on top of the situation and, t and uh, think uh, fast on your feet. So I would make you roll wits and drive and whatever the uh, amount of dots those two would have combined, that would be the amount of ro dice you would roll. Uh, fairly simple uh, in its core. And uh, of course there are stuff like, let's say, linguistics is something that differs from the others in the form of uh, one dot in linguistics means that you master one extra language. Uh, so if you have, even if you have linguistics one, you can speak in uh, a, a chosen language uh, and write that chosen language as well as somebody who would speak that as their mother tongue. Uh, all the other uh, abilities are pretty similar. Uh, then we go to advantages and there is disciplines, there is backgrounds and there is virtues. Now these are interesting. Disciplines are the vampiric supernatural abilities. These are the quote-unquote superpowers of the vampires and I really like some of them, uh, especially the more classic ones like being able to uh, 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 get absorbed into shadows and, uh, and uh, disappear from sight or, uh, or turn into a wolf or, 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 uh, or any, anything like that. But of course, uh, this is uh, there, there are so many clans and so many superpower disciplines uh, to to be learned that there is so many choices that they uh, sometimes uh, seem like uh, vampires just have superpowers like superheroes d uh, do, kind of like uh, having goth superheroes basically uh, or supervillains or whatever. Uh, basically, some of the superpowers are very outlandish. Some can even shoot fireballs from their hands or make your butt blood boil telepathically, while some others uh, perhaps uh, can influence you uh, through dominating you uh, mentally, making you basically a uh, zombie to them uh, mentally. Uh, they can whisper uh, to you to do something and you will do it. Uh, but there are others who uh, approach that in a different way uh, without making you uh, a mindless drone and following orders. They will influence you and uh, make you want 
to do uh, their bidding and that sort of thing. There are many different disciplines that uh, that um, very much shape uh, a specific clan because all of the clans, almost all of the clans, have some discipline to them that no other clan has or they are specialized in using some discipline that no other clan has or is specialized in. And uh, those are often uh, motivations for people to create a character of a specific clan. I've seen so many uh, people play a specific clan due to their specific uh, discipline. Uh, I have never seen anyone play at Zimisi without having vicissitude discipline or I have never seen uh, anyone play a uh, gangrel without having their uh, specific discipline and and so on. Uh, then we go to uh, backgrounds and backgrounds are something that you cannot buy with experience. They are bought only in character creation and uh, they can be added into uh, through uh, in-game context only. Uh, and those kind of backgrounds are your allies, your contacts, your resources, your uh, uh, status in the vampire community, uh, your uh, mentor if you have one, and that sort of thing. So you can't like just use experience points uh, to decide that your character will have more money, or decide that your character uh, character is a mentor or will be more powerful. These all have to uh, come to you in game, and uh, one of the backgrounds is the generation. You can buy a background which uh, will give you a smaller generation than uh, you would have as a default and that is how you can you can uh, get that very cheaply uh, then on virtues it becomes very interesting especially in terms of role play because what you have there are conscience and slash conviction self control slash instinct and courage and what those slashes there mean is that if you follow uh, basic human morality the basic morality that most of us live by of of you know golden rule and all that sort of stuff uh, where you basically uh, get your moral code from and your ethics uh, you would have conscience instead of conviction and you have self-control instead of instinct and of course courage and those would be your three virtues conscience self-control and courage and uh, if you follow a a specific uh, moral code uh, that differs from basically following the moral code of humanity, uh, you would have something different. Because vampires are undead creatures, because most of them uh, easily, well not most of them, but many of them easily can view themselves as uh, evil beings or that they are no longer bound by uh, uh, human morality or something like that, they can easily follow a path of, uh, of uh, a specific moral code where perhaps be, uh, instead of having a conscience being have someone with uh, conviction is a, actually a much more of a uh, virtuous uh, feature and also self-control uh, being replaced by instinct. Uh, you know, the uh, vampires often say in vampire movies and such that they are predators, that they are uh, in the upper food chain uh, is, uh, compared to humans and they are just the uh, cattle and the flock and that sort of stuff. And many vampires uh, fall uh, into following their instincts instead of their self-control due to uh, uh, mindsets like that. And of course, because all vamp vampires have the beast inside them, they have the capacity to lose themselves to uh, incredible rage. They often do that uh, when they are uh, uh, put on fire or when uh, uh, they are uh, in direct contact with sunlight or, or when they are basically, they just lose their minds due to uh, incredible rage or something. Uh, that's when the instincts take over and many vampires uh, see uh, instinct being a virtue instead of self-control. So that is an interesting uh, part of your character creation because that tells again a lot about who your character really is, uh, about his ethic and moral stances. Those are important things to think about when you think about uh, some, a place like the world of darkness where uh, uh, depressing stuff and violence and, uh, and uh, all sorts of vice is going on all the time.
And um, uh, n next, after that, oh, of course, uh, you will be made to roll these uh, at time to time. Of course, uh, that's not as often as something else, but let's say if, uh, courage is an easy one to uh, uh, imagine when you could roll uh, your courage, but self-control is something you would roll if you're about to fall into a fit of rage and do something uh, uncontrollable. And, of course, conscience uh, would be perhaps something where... Uh, uh, where basically your character would be uh, forced into doing something and of course there are a lot of examples that one could come up with where role and conscience uh, is uh, much more of a um, of a benefit than a hindrance but of course that's all about who your character is in the end uh, next after that let's go to uh, uh, the merits and flaws here on the second level. Merits and flaws are very self-explanatory, very easy to understand. You can pick out basically merits or flaws. You can pick out uh, features for your character that are either negative uh, and uh, and hinder them in some manner, uh, or you can pick out uh, merits that uh, help them in some manner. You know, and of course, uh, almost all of the vampire clan uh, weaknesses are also available as supernatural flaws. You know, normal flaws can be something like uh, perhaps that um, uh, your character is uh, very short and uh, merit would be that he's very big. Those are basically, uh, th there is no social inclination to those that, let's say, if you're very big, people would uh, perhaps be more afraid of you, and if you're short, people wouldn't be afraid of you uh, as easily. Those are mainly just uh, in physical sense. Uh, and. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that you could uh, play with in there. And uh, even though it's not mentioned in the books, you can of course go off track and do something like that. It, it gives somebody who has the merit of huge size, give them perhaps uh, a lesser difficulty sometimes when they're, do when they're doing intimidation roles and perhaps raise the difficulty if somebody who's really short is trying to intimidate somebody who's tall or something like that, you know. Uh, but the supernatural uh, flaws, um, I really like it that there are many uh, of those that are also character uh, clan uh, weaknesses. For example, what I talked about with the appearance of, uh, of the Nosferatu clan, uh, that is also a, a supernatural flaw, the flaw of being monsterious. In, can you imagine another clan other than Nosferatu having the exact same effect on people where they are so hideous that they inspire imagery of, of uh, supernatural themes and whatnot and uh, how, could you, how you could implement the, the uh, other features of those clans with that monsterious uh, nature. Of course, Nosferatu's can't take that flaw and just milk the uh, extra points you would get from taking that because they already have that as their clan flaw. But if you were, uh, let's say, a gangrel, and gangrels have the gr this great animal motif, if you would play a gangrel who would be monsterious looking, you know, there's just awesome ideas you could come up with with that. Because every time a gangrel uh, loses his mind, and goes into a frenzied, uh, rage-filled uh, state and basically gives in to the beast inside every vampire, they get a little bit more animalistic in their visage. They look a lot more beastly. And that way you could perhaps start the game with uh, somebody who's, uh, when they were turned into a vampire, there was there went something wrong and they became this monstrous, beastly uh, creature and uh, all that sort of stuff. I really like that. Also, with uh, one flaw, is uh, it's uh, called the derangement. You can pick any clan and have a deranged character. That is why I often talk about why Malkavians aren't only about the, the fact that they are insane and they should be uh, played with uh, more kind of um, gusto than just uh, 
uh, concentrating on the fact that they are insane because you can be a bruja and have the flaw of uh, derangement and be insane. The Malkavian could use his uh, uh, superpowers of turning someone insane and now they are insane but they're not Malkavians, you know, that sort of thing. So you could easily be someone who is insane, monsterious and not of clan Nosferatu or Malkavian. You know, so don't make the clan flaws uh, the main uh, distinct feature about that clan. Uh, dive into the other factors as well. Uh, next we have the part of humanity and path and this is what I talked about with the virtues because if you have uh, hu if you have the virtues of basically conscience, self-control and courage uh, then you are basically following the creed of uh, humanity. You are basically following the uh, basic uh, moral tenets that all of us follow. Be then you can just cross over the path part and you follow the uh, road of humanity, so to say. But if you follow a specific path uh, that, uh, that uh, a specific uh, sect of vampires follow, you can cross over that uh, humanity part. And let's say if you uh, 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 follow the path of the beast, you would then uh, cross over your conscience and self-control. Who needs conscience and self-control when you follow your animalistic, beastly uh, path? And then you would consider conviction and instinct uh, to be your virtues. And the, uh, and the uh, 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 ranks on your virtues, uh, your con let's say if you're following the road of humanity, then your conscience and self-control added together is the rate uh, of humanity that you have. And I really like that it makes a lot of sense uh, for somebody to uh, consider how much do, does this person have self-control. If they have little self-control, they might be somebody who just uh, in a blink of an eye will pull out a uh, stiletto or something and just go and stab somebody. Or if, if they lack conscience, um, uh, do, would, would that mean that if they see a child suffering they wouldn't care as much and those combined being the humanity it's easy to see how that character's humanity would be very low and also humanity goes uh, upward or downward based on your character's actions in the actual role-playing context and I really like that and the basic uh, rate of humanity uh, in regular everyday humans who you know uh, just live their lives and don't have any uh, specific uh, moral kind of uh, how they would differ from people they are not like criminals or or any sort of uh, mentally ill uh, psychopaths or anything like that they would have normal people have a humanity of seven and that's kind of a uh, mapping of uh, where to stand if your uh, uh, humanity is like let's say nine you're freaking saint and you probably devote most of your life to those uh, uh, moral ideals and if you're something uh, if you have something like a, a humanity of four you're basically a cold motherfucker you do not care almost at all you might care from the uh, about the people who are closest to you but you know regular people walking the streets you wouldn't mind uh, stabbing somebody to get uh, the money you need or something like that Next, it's willpower, and willpower is you have the same amount of willpower as you have courage. And that is also very self-explanatory because you use willpower in the very similar way you would use courage. Uh, you know, willpower rolls. Almost every uh, role-playing system has one form of willpower. And that is basically, even if uh, your body is able, is your mind able to act? Uh, you know, you don't need to be a trained ninja to uh, defend yourself against some something that's scary or to get yourself out of a situation where uh, things are very uh, scary or uh, desperate. Uh, if you're, if you're, uh, uh, you're doing, and also. Um, uh, well, also you can use willpower points uh, to get yourself additional uh, 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 success in your die rolls, uh, in, other, in, in regular die rolls. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what, ca what I can say about willpower. Uh, yeah, it's uh, mind over matter, <laughs> that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, th then the next part is blood pool. And blood is the uh, fuel of the vampires. In many World of Darkness games, uh, Different creatures have different sort of uh, uh, 
uh, equivalents of blood, uh, like werewolves have a spiritual power that they use called Gnosis and uh, stuff like that. Uh, vampires use blood. When they uh, drink blood, they gain blood points, and blood points are used as fuel, just like magic points in some other games, uh, to uh, use your superpowers and also to use some innate uh, vampiric powers that they all share. You can use uh, a blood point to boost your natural strength a little bit for a short while, or you can use a blood point to make you appear completely human. Since you are a vampire, you do not need to breathe, you don't need to eat, you don't need to, you don't sweat, but you can spend a blood point to do that artificially. You can sweat, you can eat, but you'll puke it out later, and that sort of thing, if you use uh, some blood to uh, make that actually happen. And there is a limit uh, of how many blood points you can use per turn because of course you could uh, just uh, use multiple blood points to boost your strength uh, like greatly uh, to, to numbers that are just insane but that is why you usually have a strict limit of okay you can use two blood points uh, per turn or something like that when you keep and that would re relinquish you of basically becoming the Hulk or something and that is why generation is a power gaming tool because if you have a low the lower your generation is the more blood points you can use per turn and that is why it mostly uh, power gamers take the generation into their backgrounds and therefore they can in one turn they can spend like five points of uh, of blood pool and uh, just turn into a Hulk basically they can just boost their strength into incredible and insane amounts and that is why uh, old vampires tend to be more powerful because they are not uh, they don't come from a, a long line of generations and generations of vampires where the blood has lost its potency. If they are old ancient vampires, their blood is very potent. And if an ancient vampire turns somebody into a vampire uh, and th they become their child, their follower, their apprentice, it's a lot bigger the deal than just some Joe Blow vampire from the, down the street turning somebody into a vampire. But that is why generations should be monitored by the GM. The generation should be given only if it has uh, a very uh, strong uh, in-game role-playing context. I hate it when generation is just used as this kind of a, okay, well, in the beginning of character creation, you have five points to spend on your uh, backgrounds. Well, I'll just spend all five on generation because that'll make me a, a, a powerful ass tank and that sort of thing. To me, that's the exact opposite of what World of Darkness games are all about. And of course, you can play, play them as that sort of hack and slash thing, but that's uh, not for me in this type of a game. But yeah, let's just <laughs> let's just uh, move on. Uh, next is your health bar there, and that's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you have seven levels of uh, health, and if you have something like uh, the merit of huge size, you get one extra level of being bruised, and that's easily like uh, descriptions of your health level, whether you're bruised, hurt, injured, wounded, mauled, crippled, incapacitated. Those are there for you to basically role play them and have a clear idea of what your character physically looks like in that sort of state. <laughs> and um, in this game, hit points, uh, basically when you're dealing with health, it's not like hit points where there's a certain amount of it is just, you know, that sort of uh, missing your hits or th the hits clinging off of your armor or that sort of th thing. It's clearly health in the sense of, you know, at the first level of getting a damage, you get uh, bruise. It's just when you use armor and s stuff like that, it's a lot harder for that initial success to happen to give you uh, health level um, 
uh, hits. And uh, there's also, once you get uh, uh, more than your first level, uh, you will start to get penalties for your own die rolls, whether it's uh, minus one or two or more, depending on your physical state. Then there's the weakness, and weakness is your clan weakness. It's very self-explanatory. The clan page simply says your weakness is this. If you're playing the Malkavian I talked about, it's gonna be your mental illness for Nosferatu. It's your uh, mysteriously hideous appearance and that sort of thing. And of course there's experience points and uh, I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> I get through this without going into a too much of a tirade about generation, but still, yeah, it's a, that's how you do it and that's my opinions on the different parts about it.